Well, pre-eclampsia is a fascinating condition. Um, it's diagnosed by, in a previously healthy woman, finding high blood pressure and protein in her urine in the second half of pregnancy. And both of those things clear up after the baby's born. Preeclampsia is just one reason why consultant obstetrician Des Holden must record the blood pressure of all of his antenatal clients. Best today. The, the name of preeclampsia, the pre part, means that there is something that is more severe, and that is eclampsia. And eclampsia is defined when somebody has convulsions in relation to their blood pressure and their, their complication of pregnancy. And eclampsia is a, is a very serious condition. And there are a few deaths in the UK and within the world there are many deaths in relation to eclampsia every year. It tends to affect about 5% of women in the average obstetric population in the UK. Um, it's more prevalent in certain other areas of the world, interestingly. Um, it's much more common in first pregnancies, and it's more common in first pregnancies per partner. So somebody who's had preeclampsia with one partner and has perhaps had another baby where she had no preeclampsia, if she changes her partner, she can have preeclampsia again. So it's a very interesting condition. Um, it's a condition which we see uh, reflected in mum's health and also in the baby's health. So on the mum's side of the placenta, we see a woman who often has high blood pressure, who may be a little bit more edematous and swollen, who has protein in her urine, and maybe has some subtle abnormalities of the way some other organs are working. Uh, in the baby, we often see a baby that's a bit smaller than we would expect and there are uh, ultrasound tests which we can apply to small babies which suggest that they are small and want to be bigger rather than just happily small. Okay, this is the placenta. This placenta is at the top of the uterus. Well, we know the cause is related to the placenta and we know the cause is related to the way the placenta attaches to the wall of mum's uterus early in pregnancy. So although the condition only reveals itself later in pregnancy, it's certain that it's to do with events early on in the pregnancy and the way that placenta attaches. There isn't really a treatment for preeclampsia um, and what we would teach our medical students is that the only treatment is to deliver the mum. Now of course, if the, the preeclampsia comes on quite early in the pregnancy, we would try not to deliver, but try to get further gestational age in that baby so that it, it is um, stronger and more developed in order to be born. Um, so the nearer the end of pregnancy that the preeclampsia comes on, the more we would deliver that woman when we have made the diagnosis. There's lots of exciting studies going on as to whether the risk of preeclampsia can be modified, whether we can take someone who's at high risk of getting it and prevent them from getting it. Um, and there's lots of interest in using vitamins to prevent that. And the vitamins of interest are vitamin C and vitamin E. And these are a group of vitamins that are antioxidants, uh, as anyone who goes to health food shops would know. Um, and there's a lot of excitement about whether that can increase the gestation at which preeclampsia comes on. Vitamin C isn't stored in the body, so you must ensure a daily intake of foods high in the vitamin. These are broccoli, tomatoes, papaya, mango, red, yellow and orange peppers, potatoes and kiwi fruit. It's best if you eat these vegetables and fruits fresh or frozen. Tinned vegetables and fruit tend to lose a great deal of the vitamin content in the canning process. Vitamin E can be stored in the body and those foods high in vitamin E are vegetable oils like sunflower and safflower oil green leafy vegetables, spinach, broccoli, kiwi and mango. Nuts also contain vitamin E, but you may need to avoid them if there's a family history of nut allergy. Both these vitamins are known as antioxidants, which help to protect the body against free radicals, which are a byproduct of the oxygen that we breathe, and free radicals can affect healthy cell growth. There's also evidence that these vitamins can help to eliminate heart disease and certain types of cancers.